Banjo Land, Mike Heading here. I've been on a Jimmy Martin kick all week, so I thought I would do a quick, short mini lesson on how to play some classic 3-4 banjo backup licks that were very common in Jimmy Martin songs. He had a whole bunch of great songs in 3-4, and he had a whole bunch of great banjo players in his band. Jimmy Martin wasn't a banjo player, but he was very particular about how he wanted the banjo to sound in his band. I'm going to break down eight licks for you and talk about a couple of the songs that you'll hear these licks in. Let's start getting into the lesson. Here's three, four backup licks in the Jimmy Martin style. All right, let's start breaking down these waltz time banjo backup licks kind of in the style of Jimmy Martin's banjo players. And we're going to start up a little higher up the neck. A lot of these licks, you can play them wherever and I'll show you how to move them around. But a lot of these licks are done up the neck. I think it just gets out of the way of the vocalist a little bit by having you know, the, the banjo play higher up the neck. So we're gonna do it up in our C chord at the 10th fret, and I'll show you how to move them around later in the lesson. But we're gonna start up at our, our C chord, our f shape movable chord. Let's just go over that to make sure we got it. I'm gonna use my third finger on the 10th fret of the fourth string, second finger, ninth fret of the third string, first finger, eighth fret, second string, and pinky up on the 10th fret of the high first string. You're probably familiar with this chord. Again, it's, it's a lot of times called your F shape, and we're just moving that around up to the 10th fret, okay? And what I want you to practice is, basically our pinky is gonna kind of stay where it is. Our third finger, our ring finger, is going to play on the 10th frets on the second string, third string, and fourth string. So you kind of want to get used to moving your, your third finger around, okay? So get used to moving your third finger around. Your first finger is going to play all these eighth frets. So if there was one on the fourth string, third string, second string, which it is already down, or first string. Okay? And your second finger is going to take all the ninth frets, if there, if there are any, okay? So basically you have one finger covering all the strings for each fret. Kind of like if you imagined you were doing a, a bar chord. The only difference is that pinky up on, on the highest first string is usually just going to stay planted there, okay? So first thing I would do is just kind of get familiar moving around with those fingers. Let's just try that for, one, for a second before we get into the licks. So let's move our third finger up to the second string, and I'm just going to use the thumb of my right hand, keep my right hand really simple. So we're going to play the ninth, or the tenth fret, excuse me, tenth fret, ninth fret with your second finger, and then eighth fret with your first finger. So I'm just going down. Again, I got my pinky planted, that's my anchor point. Now I'm gonna, let's move down to the third string, do the same thing. And then down to the fourth string. And you can go back up the notes. You just wanna get familiar with your fingers playing on those frets. Again, it's a chord position, so always think of it relative to this bigger shape. Okay, now that we've got the basic chord down and chord shape down, let's look at our first lick. So remember, it starts with a, the first measure is a vamp. So we're going to hit our thumb on the fourth string, tenth fret. Then we're going to pinch strings three, two, and one at the same time. And I'm kind of letting off the pressure with my left hand as I do that pinch. So we have... I'm kind of exaggerating it. You don't necessarily want to hear... Kind of want to let the mute mute the notes so it cuts it off a little bit. It's very sim common in vamping patterns. You, you cut the notes short a little bit. And remember, we're only counting to three in, in all these licks. We have one, two, and then you could do another pinch, which would be three. Otherwise, another variation is we're going to hit our thumb on the third string and then pinch strings two and one. So you have, and that'd be eighth notes. You'd have one, two, three, and one. just looping measure one of lick one. So practice that as many times as you need to. That's just a great vamping pattern for 3-4. So all these patterns you could save for, for playing back up, again, in any type of 3-4 song. So this first lick works great on a slower waltz song. So a slower song in 3-4. It's a little tricky to do this lick on a faster song. So 
Save this one for a slower song. And again, it's from the song It Takes One to Know One, so you can check out that song on YouTube or, or download it or listen to it to get reference point for the lick. And then measure two, we're gonna go back to the, the fourth string. And then we're gonna bring our third finger up to the 10th fret of the second string and we're gonna pinch those two strings on the end of beat two. And then we're gonna take your third finger off, go back to your first finger, pinch those strings, move your third finger down to the 10th fret of the third string, and then move your first finger down to the eighth fret of the first string, and then back down to the 10th fret. So we have one, two, and, and then we have triplets here. So how you count triplets is triplet. Triplet. And I'm doing index and middle, and then thumb index with my right hand. And then down to the 10th fret ends it. So you have one and triplet one is how you would count it. Another way you can do it is if you need to prep, if you're a little unsure of the counting, is you can do a thumb pinch and then do the lick. It's a little tricky to do it, but you can do it on a slower song, but it gives you a reference point for beat two. So you have one, two. But without that extra pinch, it would be. Measure three again is back to a vamp, so we hit the 10th the fret on the four string. Then we're gonna hit our middle finger of our right hand, keep your position down, and then do a forward roll, T I M strings three, two, one. So we have one, two, and three, and. So we're going to use a lot of these vamping patterns, so measures one and three in all these licks. So we'll get plenty of practice with these. So, And again, you can mix up the vamping patterns. So you could, as a challenge, you could do measure three as the first one if you wanted to. You could go. Now I do my lick. And now I go into measure one. So remember, the, the vamping at measure one and three. So the lick is between the vamping patterns, measures one and three. The lick is actually measure two, remember. So you can substitute those vamping patterns and mix them up. That'd be really good practice. Okay, let's do lick one a few more times, all the way through, here we go. Starts over. The other thing you can practice is moving this one around. When you get it down, you can go to like the four chord, so F at the 15th fret, do the same thing. So you could, you know, you could practice it up there. Again, these licks are usually done higher. You could do them down here if you wanted to. But a lot of times in Jimmy Martin banjos songs, you would hear them up the neck, you know. It's just a movable lick, so wherever you can do that. Let's look at It Takes One to Know One Lick 2, so very similar. We're going to start it the same way. And then right here, we're just going to do a quick move before we're going to, we're going to bar the eighth fret with our first finger, pinch index and middle, and then back to that tenth fret. And then we do the triplet lick. We're going to bar the back to the bar chord. And then two pinches. So pretty similar. Let's play the middle part of lick two. So we have We have one, two, and triple it. One, two, and triple it. One is how you'd count it. You can see I have to lift my third finger off to get a little bit of clearance. What I do there is I kind of lean my hand. You can see I kind of drop my hand down quick to do that bar chord. And if you were having trouble with that bar chord, you could just play on the high string if you wanted to. do the, the second half of the triplet. So the triplet really is eight, eighth fret on the second string, 10th fret, eighth fret. And I'm just adding those pinches on the higher string really, you know, like we did the first time. Or right here we're doing it with a bar. 
So a lot of these variations are just subtle variations, right? And that's why it's so important to always be thinking about the chord shape and always using those fingers that we talked about. So your first finger is always playing all the eighth frets, your second finger is playing all the ninth frets, and your third finger, except on that very highest string, is, is playing all the, the tenth frets. Let's do that lick again. Here we go. Not too hard. I think you can get that with some practice. It's pretty similar to the lick one that we already worked on. So let's look at the, the next song, Drink Up and Go Home, another classic Jimmy Martin song. So this song's a little bit faster. So it's more of a... Where t it takes one to know one was slow. So this one's a faster waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we're going to start it. Same, same pattern. We're going to start with the vamp. We're gonna do a lick and then back to a vamping pattern. So we're gonna do thumb, pinch, pinch. So that's measure seven. Now the lick is move your third finger to the 10th fret of the third string and you're gonna bend that note up. And you're gonna put your first finger on the eighth fret of the first string, play your middle finger twice. And then you're gonna bend that note back down the third string back down. And then down to the eighth fret and then down to the 10th fret. So you have Keep that note bent up. You want to hear it bend back down. Let's do just the right hand once it's. So we have. And then we're ending it with our vamping pattern that we did in the beginning lick. We did that and it takes one to know one so that, that's pretty simple so really the only difference is the middle part of this this pattern so we have so not too hard let's look at drink up and go home lick two we're going to start it with that rolling vamp favorite backup 3-4 licks. I use that all the time. I find that one really good for moving around the neck, so that, that's a good one to practice. So we've done this one already. Thumb on the fourth string, up to the, your middle finger of your right hand on the first string, and then roll forward, string 3-2-1. So you have 1, 2, and 3, and... this lick you're going to move your third finger to the 10th fret of the third string and you're going to go thumb index thumb index back and forth third string second string while bending that 10th fret up and then do that back bend eighth fret so it ends the same way as the lick we just did the the only difference is it starts slightly different and then it ends the same way so we have That's another one you might hear higher up the neck, like up in an F chord at the 15th fret. You might hear that in Ocean of Diamonds, which is another lick we'll break down. He did that. Um, so that's a good one. Another way you could do it is if you can go up to the 8th fret on the first string, more similar to the other one we did. Just very subtle variations. Only difference is I just changed my first finger to the eighth fret on the first string. And then I guess I actually changed to my middle finger of my right hand too. So not too hard. I think you can get that with some practice. Let's do it one more time. Here's drink up and go home lick two. Now another Jimmy Martin song, I'll drink no more wine. So nice after drink up and go home. Here's another one, I'll drink no more wine. So it's gonna start the same way. Thumb, pinch, pinch, we've done this before. 
this is kind of a variation on what's called the six white horses lick. Um, you might have heard. That's a classic Earl Scruggs backup lick. I think he used it in a song called Six White Horses originally. That's why it's called the Six White Horses lick, I think. Um, but we're going to do basically a 3-4 version of that. So that works in 4-4. Four, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one. But we only have three beats per measure, so we're going to do just a variation. We're just going to start on the third string, eighth fret, ninth fret. This is your first time your second finger is going to get involved. So we're going to do thumb index with our right hand. And then 8, 10 on the second string. And then back to 8, 9 on the third string. And then back down to your 10th fret on the fourth string. So you have thumb, pinch, pinch. And then the lick. And then that backwards roll. Again, that's another one where you could practice moving it around. It's a classic lick that you'll want to practice. Okay, so that's a really good one. That's pretty easy. Again, just tr try the right hand on its own if you're having trouble. I'll do measure 14. It's a lot of thumb index back and forth. Third string, second string, third string. It's also, a, this is a lick you would do on a faster song. So it'd be like. You can practice moving that around, you know, like I said. So let's do, I'll drink no more wine lick two. So we're going to start with the same way, starts the same way, thumb, pinch, pinch. And then we're going to do kind of a variation on a lick we've already done. Bar chord, eighth fret, pinch, index, and middle. And then you add the tenth fret, pinky, and third finger. And then we're going to quick bend that down. So you have... And if you can bend it up or back down a little, you can. If you don't have time, it's okay. You can just go. So it's just a kind of a variation on licks we've already been doing. So we have. So not too hard there. Let's look at the last two licks. This one's from Ocean of Diamonds, a classic Jimmy Martin song. We're going to play the 10th fret on... This one actually starts with a lick. It doesn't have a vamp at the beginning, so it's slightly different, but, but not too different. Um, so we're going to play the 10th fret on the 4th string, up to the 8th fret on the 1st string with your 1st finger. And then we're going to do a quick little triplet lick, 8th fret on the 4th string with a hammer on to the 10th fret, and then 8th fret on the 3rd string. I did thumb index with my right hand. So let's do measure 19, the beginning of Ocean of Diamond Lick 1. And then the second half of it, bend the 10th fret twice. And then bend it back down, 10th fret, 8th fret. And then pinch. So the middle part of the lick is kind of a variation on what we've already done. It's just... So it's thumb, 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 index, thumb with your right hand. So you bend it up twice. And then the second time you keep it bent up. And then you bend it back down. It's good practice controlling your bends. And then thumb, pinch, pinch ends it. So we have... That's a great one to practice. So you have... too hard. Let's do Ocean of Diamonds Lick 2. It's kind of similar. We're going to do Thumb Pinch to start it on our chord. And then that same hammer on. And then right here we're going to do one bend on the 10th fret of the 3rd string. Up to the 8th fret of the 1st string. And then bend it back down. And then 10th fret on the 4th string with the roll. So it's just kind of a combination of all the licks we've been doing. We're doing Thumb Pinch. And then that hammer on. Not 
too hard. I think you can get all these licks with practice. Remember, follow the right hand and left hand fingerings below the tab. You know, remember we're using our, our first finger for all those eighth frets in this example, second finger for all the ninth frets, third finger for all the tenth frets, except that very highest one on, on the first string. All these licks are movable, so you could do them in D, do them in E, do them in A. Um, you know, you could do them in G down here. Remember, I would probably practice them more up the neck. They're kind of, they sound a little better above the, the, the vocal lines. But just listen to all the songs I have listed, and that's a, also a great instance of how do you fit these licks into the song. Okay? Hopefully that helps you out. All right. Good luck.